welcome to Washington State Parks. My name is Alyssa Adams and I'll be your park ranger for the day. Today, I'm here to talk to you about something really special that a lot of people get excited about. Volcanoes! But more specifically, one famous volcano. I'm lucky enough to work at Mount St. Helens, the most active volcano in the entire Cascade Range. Holy smokes! But let's back up for a second. What is the Cascade Range? This is a mountain range of 13 volcanoes that starts in Canada and extends through Washington, Oregon, and California. And here's us at Mount St. Helens. I invite you to join me for a three-part mini-series as we explore the eruptive process of Mount St. Helens. This video is part one and will highlight the buildup to the 1980 eruption through dance. You heard me right, we're gonna get out there and wiggle. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to our helpers. We have State Park visitor, Leah. I love volcanoes. And we've got Mount St. Helens. All right, let me set the stage for you. Imagine if you will, it's the spring of 1980 and you're in Southwest Washington in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest. It's a blue bird sky day. The old growth forest is towering above your head, swaying in the afternoon breeze. Off in the distance, there's a little creek meandering through the woods. All around you is an understory of thick vegetation with little flowers popping up through the soil. Above you, a bird screeches in the distance and little squirrels are chattering in the branches nearby. This is a recreational paradise and people come from near and far to experience the beauty that this land has to offer. And the reason for that, well, off in the distance, this is what you'd see, Mount St. Helens. Picturesque, postcard worthy, and practically symmetrical. This is the mountain everybody flocked to. And why did people come here, you ask? Well, there is plenty to see and do. Back in the day, people really enjoyed hiking, camping, wildlife watching, and mountain climbing, among many things. And as you guess, you can't reach the summit like you used to. But it wasn't just the forest that people came to. People were drawn to the lake at the base of the mountain. And we call that Spirit Lake, and it was a hip happening place to be. On the shores were lodges, resorts, and summer camps for families and for kids. This was a place of a thousand memories. And what did people do on those hot summer days? Well, there was log rolling, canoeing, swimming in the cold, crisp water, and finding hidden waterfalls. In fact, most people knew about Harmony Falls. This was a peaceful place and generations of families came to visit. But as you guessed, everything was about to change. The Mount St. Helens community was about to experience two months of activity and unrest. Dun, dun, dun. Let's learn what happened. The first thing the Q scientists said that something was going on at Mount St. Helens was earthquakes around the clock. So many earthquakes you couldn't tell them apart from each other. We call that a seismic swarm. Let's put a dance move to what those earthquakes looked like. Like this. Now it's your turn to give it a try. The second thing that told scientists, hey, something's going on, is what we call harmonic tremors. Constant ground vibrations and constant ground movement beneath our feet. This was from gas-rich magma, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and very smelly sulfur gases. Let's put a dance move to the harmonic tremors. Here we go. You wanna use your voice and your whole body. It looks and sounds like this. Ah! Now it's your turn to try. The third indication that something big was on the horizon is what we call phreatic eruptions. This was steam and ash and gas pressurizing inside and releasing up and outwards. That pressure release actually ripped open a crater the size of a football field at the top of Mount St. Helens. Let's put a dance move to phreatic eruptions. The pressure was building inside and it popped and broke up and out. Now it's your turn to give it a try. 
The fourth sign scientists observed is what they called the bulge. This was a deformation or a change in the shape of the volcano. This was caused from the liquid rock on the inside pushing outwards against the solid rock, cracking, fracturing, and expanding outwards the side of the mountain. It was recorded as growing five feet a day. Whoa! Let's take a look at what that would have looked like. First thing you need, your x-ray vision goggles. Slap those on your head. We're gonna look right inside the mountain. Here's the mountain, here's the bulge, but this is what was going on. This was the trouble place, the buildup of liquid magma. Well, let's put a dance move to the bulge. Okay, hey everybody, here we go. The liquid rock was pressured outwards. Boom, boom, boom. Once again, the bulge is growing. Boom, boom, boom. Now it's your turn to give it a try. My goodness. Let's go ahead and string all of our dance moves together as we learned about the buildup to the 1980 eruption. Let's give it a try. The first indication something was happening was earthquakes beneath our feet, followed by harmonic tremors. Uh... Then we had phreatic eruptions as the pressure built and was released upwards. And lastly, the bulge as the liquid rock was pushing outwards. Boom, boom, boom. Now you give it a try. String them all together. <laughs> I hope that through this dance, you have a better understanding of what happened before Mount St. Helens erupted. A lot of people think that it blew without warning, but now you know that simply isn't true. There's a lot of signs ahead of time queuing scientists in. Well, thank you so much for joining us today for the first part in our three-part mini-series exploring the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Join us next time for our second video as we look into the 1980 eruption. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Visitors coming, act like a ranger. Oh, look at that bird over there. Oh, beautiful.